Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Now today, we're checking out this brand new RS6 and actually, this will be a car which hopefully, if plans go well, you will see on the channel quite a bit. I'm joined today from Alex from QS Tuning because this is their brand new shop car slash project car. The car is pretty much stock. In fact, there's a few tiny bits that have been done to it already, which I'll get Alex to explain very shortly. So yeah, this is gonna be a, a bit of a project really, like I said, and hopefully a, a documentation series of it being done. Uh, QS Tuning, fairly obviously, are a tuning shop specializing in the VW Audi group, hence why they have one of these. So, I'm pretty excited for this. I haven't really got up close and personal with one of these before. It looks absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, what we'll do, we'll run some more B-roll, I'll introduce you to Alex, and uh, we'll, we'll get him to run around the car, and then we'll go out in it to experience it. Okay, so everyone, this is Alex from QS. This is the new beast, isn't it? It is indeed. <laughs> so you replaced this with an RS7? Yeah, so correct. We had a 2014 RS7 demo vehicle before this. Uh, that was an APR stage two car, downpipes, plugs, air filter, dropped on Voston wheels. Really, really cool car. Um, we've done tons and tons of the RS6, RS7, C7, C7.5. Um, quite a few of our customers were moving on to these C8 platform cars. We put an order in our local Audi dealership and thought, yep, yeah, we'll have one. We'll start development on it. Um, as Luke's already said, it's gonna be a bit of a project and we're really excited to work with Luke, documenting it all for you guys. Um, you see, it's pretty much a stock car at the moment. Um, I wanna say it's Navara black, but I keep getting confused between the old colors. It's basically a bluey black color. Um, so far, we've detailed it, full PPF on it, ceramic coated it. Then yesterday, we had a cancellation, managed to just get our KW Has kit on it. Um, which is super cool, dropped the car about an inch or so. Um, there's still more movement there. It just made the car look how it should have done out of the box because these sit super, super high now compared to the previous model. Uh, ride quality is unchanged, literally drives like a stock car still, just sat lower, giving it a far nicer, more aggressive stance. No, it does look cool. Were you saying that it's the first kit in the UK? Yeah, so we're actually the first people in the UK to fit one of these KW Has kits, which That's is super, cool. super cool as well. Yeah. Um, it's a really nice the... kit. Yeah, we do loads and loads of KW stuff. Yeah. Um, really great company. We're actually a performance partner for KW. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, this is, it's called a Haas height adjustable spring kit. Essentially, it's a coil over kit with the stock damper. So you've got a sleeve which slides on the stock damper and you've got an adjuster on the rear. So a conventional lowering spring, you put it on the car, that is what it is. You can't adjust it. Yeah. You may not be happy with the stance, whereas this, you can really tailor it to how you want it. So say, for example, if you've got a bigger wheel, different tire, you want quite a wide spacer stance, you can really sort of dial the car in to get that perfect stance mm, for the customer, which is nice. Sweet. And obviously you still need to do a few fine tuning little bits, I think, don't you? Yeah, so um, as we were saying earlier, being a brand new car, it's actually a 70 plate car. So any car 2019 onwards, uh, they have the OPF GPF filters due to the Boo. E6. I know, <laughs> it spoils every performance car. Um, so yeah, next up, um, we're actually gonna leave those in for a bit and do a bit yep. of stage one development on it. Um, we're gonna do a Miltec cat back on it. Hopefully that's gonna enhance the sound slightly, but then after that, cats, OPF, all gonna be coming out uh, for DCAT downpipes, so full Miltec turbo back. We'll then have a stage two tune for it. Um, we'll remove the soft limiter. We'll add in crackles on the overrun like the previous generation that everyone grew to love. Um, then we'll see where it goes from there. But yeah, we're super excited. We've got mm. a set of 22 inch Vossens to go on it as well. Um, I mean, these, these wheels are not small as, yeah, they, as, come they, as on, they, they come. They come on 22s. And they're huge. They're massive. They're absolutely huge. For a road car, they're yeah. absolutely huge. Sort of thing like a few years ago, you just see on like an SUV, like a Range Rover, <laughs> yeah. Rolls Royce Phantom, stuff like that. But you're getting on like an Audi estate car out of the box now. It's ridiculous. ridiculous. And the brakes. Actually, yeah, we're going to go back to the front quickly because look at the size of the brakes on this. So they're 420 mil out of the box. Absolute giant. And these are the stills. You can get the carbon ceramic. Um, I believe they're 20 mil bigger disc, but don't shoot me if I'm wrong, mm. but the carbon ceramic's even bigger than these stills. <laughs> and even more expensive, probably. Well, definitely, actually. I can't remember the cost, <laughs> but it was obscene. Lot, um, yeah. We're gonna work with a few of our partners, do a pad upgrade and mm -hmm. a line upgrade on this as well. Um, nice. Not that the brakes are bad. They are pretty good out of the box, yeah. um, but obviously it's over two tons. It's going to have yeah. over 750 horsepower. It's going to need to stop. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, I think this yeah. car 
In this spec, actually, it works. Like, it's, it's a, a proper, really sinister spec, it isn't is. it? It is. I mean, just look at that from the front. But it's nice. So this is the carbon edition. Um, so you get all the carbon nice. front of the car. You get the carbon side skirts, diffuser. Um, then I don't think Audi have done it before, but you've got all raw carbon inside it, similar to like what BMW have done for a few years now. I noticed that. Yeah, when we're it's driving really out, cool, actually. isn't it? Have a look at that. Too. It's, it's nice because you don't get any glare off the dash either, with like conventional glossy That's carbon. That's one wave. of my pet peeves. That is the glare. Yeah, typical Audi in the interior from the modern day, but yeah, it's that kind of raw carbon. It's actually pretty texturized, isn't it? I know it's really nice. It's pretty cool. All we don't, the screens we don't and want to catch a watch or anything on it. Oh, no, definitely not. Definitely <laughs> um, not. But yeah, it's cool. It's a really nice place to be in there. Definitely a massive improvement over mm. the previous generation. But obviously, C7 platforms, what, eight year old platform now? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like the first C7 A6 is coming out in like 2011, 2012. Mm. Um, but yeah, it is super cool. There's yeah. a lot of tech on there. It's very, very refined. Like we were saying earlier, almost too refined at the moment, <laughs> which is obviously where we come in yeah, exactly. um, to improve the whole package. Mm. Um, but Sweet. yeah, super excited. Awesome, and it's Talking a big about. old car as well. It's it, huge. I, to me, this is like the ultimate daily. If I yeah, have a collection of cars, say, yeah. this would be my daily. And especially when it's tuned, obviously, it will still drive like a completely stock car, mm. the exhaust valve shut, it will still be silent, and obviously you can flick it in dynamic, the RS modes, and it will really wake it up. At the moment, like I was saying to you earlier, <laughs> I think people will test drive them and almost be a bit underwhelmed by it, but you've just got to realize that once a few subtle modifications are done under the bonnet exhaust related as well it's it's going to be an amazing platform yeah. like we're saying uh, the chassis is brilliant on it for such a big car mm. the initial turn in is very audi-esque obviously the front will always drag a little bit but then the four wheel steer which these new models now have really sorts that out um yeah really really nice chassis just once we're done with it, it's going to be an absolutely phenomenal yeah. car. So if you don't mind, because I've, like I said in the intro, I've never really got up close to one of these. What are we looking at power at the moment completely stock? So stock, they're just under 600 horsepower um, and around 800 newton meters of torque. Um, we will get it on the dyno stock, yep. um, but the dyno's literally been in use. We've had the car nearly two weeks now, um, but we've had tons and tons of projects on the dyno. Customers' yeah. cars take priority. So this, hopefully, we'll get it on the dyno next week, maybe, to get some mm -hmm. baseline runs. Um, we'll try and film that as well, it should be quite cool. Yeah, definitely. Well, like I said, we're going to try and uh, try and document this the best we can because this, well, it's not going to be looking, sounding, or going as what it will. It's going to be fun. Our yes. old RS7 was an absolute monster. Like, I saw, a, a I, lot I, of people loved that yeah. car. It was a really, really cool car. But the time had come to move on to something mm. else. Um, so yeah, here we are now with this. That looks awesome. I love it without the Audi badge on the back, actually. That looks yeah, really we cool. seem to end up doing that on everything. Obviously, it all got removed for PPF anyway. Yeah. Um, but then it was a case of, yeah, it, look, it looks quite nice without it, to be honest. Mm. Um, it was, it's a bit strange at the moment with the non-sport exhaust. It sort yeah. Of, it lets the whole <laughs> stealth look down. Oh, we've got the carbon diffuser, though. Yeah, all part of the carbon pack. Nice. And you get all the black badges as well, which Audi have only recently started doing. Um, yeah, you, normally you have to do that with like with BMW as well. You have to buy it. Yeah, and change and it's them. It's like forty yeah. quid for a bag. You can get them now um, <laughs> from your local Audi dealers and suppliers. You That's can right. actually so say for example you own like an old RS5 for example. Yeah. You can now change them to the later badges, which oh. we've done for quite a few customers yeah. now. Anyway, sweet. Well, I think that's a pretty good walk around of the car. Now we know what we're dealing with. I think we should fire it up and uh, go and have some fun, right? Yeah, let's do it. Sadly, for a stock car, <laughs> no. um, obviously it's, it's nothing on a tuned previous gen, mm. but it, it doesn't go badly. Yeah, no, it's, to be fair, mm. I've experienced some previous gen R6s, and just this interior alone like, is a It's a nice interior, yeah. and I was saying earlier, the, the steering feel and the feel on the roads, mm. so, so, so far improved. Mm. 
you just feel that yeah. it just like kind of carries you around the corner with the rear wheel yeah steer. the rear wheel steer sort of pushes you around nicely yeah it must be a bizarre feeling it is like we were speaking yeah. off camera just just a minute ago we we're saying that it almost feels like a lot smaller when you're in it, it al i want to say it almost feels a bit when you're on the limit it almost begins to feel a bit like rear wheel drive-esque where you sort of get that push round in it yeah it's like sort of like you drive by gt4 hard and obviously it's completely different the gt4 turning is brilliant everything like that this mm. obviously it drags it understeers being an audi yeah but the rear sort of pitches round and gives you a similar sort of sensation to like a rear wheel drive will do mm. as it starts to grip and pull you around if that makes sense like it's a bizarre yeah, yeah. bizarre sensation even like in the passenger seat you like you can feel it you can feel it working yeah yeah but then sort of turn the steering wheel and it's, it's like, weird you don't expect <laughs> it to be that direct and by the way we're not speaking from that ex acceleration just now we have done a little bit of driving before we yeah. started recording <laughs> it's even just like parking it yeah like you'll sort of you'll pull in to like parallel park it you'll be like like I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit something but <laughs> it just it literally just turns so sharp yeah it's a really really weird sensation like maneuvering it around our work like it's fairly tight around the back as we go into the shop yeah and in this it's an absolute breeze like just the turning circle is phenomenal right? well that's what like makes it like another reason for it to be the a ultimate brilliant daily, daily yeah. yeah like it's comfy in here <laughs> it's too quiet it's like. not loud <laughs> yeah it's too quiet but then the nice thing of these cars like the previous generation you can have them really noisy you can have a non-resonated yeah. exhaust no catalysts and in the car it's still silent then mm. you put the window down you're like oh wow i'm making yeah. a lot of noise because they're all double glazed windows in here mm. as well so in the car it is very very quiet uh, well it is outside as well what I'm saying is when you get an exhaust on it you'll have the best yeah. of both worlds. obviously you can flick it in auto comfort mm. and it's quiet then you can go dynamic the rs modes and it's really going to come alive yeah that's cool actually the dash is the very dash cool is awesome and you can change that can't you because we like it yeah you can go to like the classic sort of layout um you've got like the power and torque you've got yeah. the g-force meter um it is it is a cool dash yeah it is Although we were speaking about like just this whole interface with the, is it touch? touch yeah, what, it's what sort of, it's it? like touch, a, but it's not quite touch. Like you've got to click it, yeah. if that makes sense. So you've got to make um, a fingerprint in order to do something. Yeah, like it. but it's quite nice in a way because some of them are overly sensitive, but this is nice. Like you have to firmly click it before mm. it works, which yeah. is nice, but it's a bit of a weird feeling. You, you expect to sort of just like brush past it or mm. change track or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've sort of really got to press it. Bit of a straight in front of us now. Love that. <laughs> God, that flies, man. You can feel like through these bends here, like the turning is really nice on it. Yeah. The gearbox is good as well. Yeah, the gearbox is super sharp on it. Um, it's so much quicker than the old box. Yeah. Obviously, it's still an automatic it's not a dual clutch gearbox or anything like that um, but it is, it is a very good gearbox yeah, yeah. i'm still about there <laughs> Imagine if an extra 150 odd horsepower, another 300, yeah. 350 newton meters of torque. It's and an exhaust. <laughs> and an exhaust, much <laughs> needed exhaust. But the things in here, it's weird. Um, like we were saying, to be fair, I might turn around and go back on a different road. It's all for a village here. Um, yeah. Like we were saying earlier, like you sort of you stand behind the car mm. and it's silent. There's so much noise being pumped in here, um, which is it's a bit of a shame, really. But yeah. obviously, an exhaust is. But it's I suppose at the same time, thing. the exhaust is so far back. It yeah. is a very long way away from you, isn't it? Um, obviously, it is. But you feel like the turning <laughs> circle is ridiculous to the four wheel steer. <laughs> I, not, I like it how you get that little the nudge. feeling on the gearbox. But yeah. then if you, say, take it out of RS mode. It must be the first um, time that car's ever been so out of RS. So if we put it in like dynamic <laughs> mode there, yeah. and it's still a quick shift, but it's a smooth, yeah. more sedate shift. Because some gearboxes nowadays, you change gear and you don't even know that you've changed gear. Yeah, it's nice. It's not like the old sort of like the Lamborghini E gear where it feels like literally someone's punching you in the back of the neck when <laughs> yeah. you change gear. But it's nice. It's sort of, 
it reminds you you're you're in a performance car, yeah, um, exactly. which which is nice. But it's it's going back to like the previous R6, like C7. That was very similar. Way it has sort of like two moods. Like yeah, you can drive it to sort of your day job nice and normally. Then when it comes to the weekend, you can go out and it have a right laugh and it have all your mates in the car and just go and destroy supercars. Yeah, which yeah. it's sort of what I think the whole RS6 thing's always been that's about, it. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, it. it's you're getting two two or three cars in one. Mm. Um, everyone respects them on the road. People are like, oh, nice car. They all look at it. Every, everyone just knows what an RS6 yeah. is, don't they? Like Which the is road nice. presence, especially this one, the new one, black. Especially out. since dropping it on the KW Haskett, yeah. it's given it's given the car a whole new look. Really, just mm. dropping it, it's really emphasized the whole width of the car. Um, That's so not what we're everywhere, aren't they? Bloody Tour de France. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, like most cars nowadays, they just sit so high and just doing the smallest of, of like the things. It's changes. strange, like you have this on the ramp and it's completely flat underneath. Mm. It's not as though there's like big under tray hanging down, big gearbox sump hanging down, down pipes, link pipes all hanging down. It's, it's literally completely flat. That's interesting. Um, which is a bit bizarre as to why they felt the need to sit it so high. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. Anyway, I think, well, kind of a, a little introduction to what is to come, hopefully, in the next, well, probably a few months, I guess. We'll probably stagger it out. But. Yeah, so I think next thing's going to be, um, as we were saying earlier, looking at the intake on it mm. um, and a stage one tune at first. So we're basically going to do it in packages. So yeah. you guys, if you own an RS6, you can sort of experience it and see it step by step mm. um, rather than just going straight in, pulling yeah. all the down pipes out. Um, doing cat deletes on it, GPF delete and everything like that. So we're going to do it all in step by steps to show different stages. It's like that's why, like we were saying earlier, why the Boston wheels aren't on it now. Because we want to yep. show the car just dropped yeah. um, on the factory OEM wheels. Um, that's really sort of the point of this car, just to show mm. potential customers and just anyone that's interested what you can do with one going through the stages with it. Which that's it, yeah. is, it's going to be quite interesting. It's going to be fun. And I can imagine that probably towards the end of this little series, it's, it's going to be a monster, isn't it? It's it's gonna, yeah, gonna if it's monster. anything to go by, obviously I haven't experienced a tune one yet. Mm. Um, this is sort of our first one. Um, well, it's one of the first around, really, because you don't it, see them. I've never seen another one on the road. You see quite a few of the RS4s, and from a distance, yeah. you drive towards them, and they look quite similar. Mm. Um, but yeah, there really, really aren't many of them. But I think the sort of whole coronavirus sort of mm. delayed. Like essentially, yeah. we ordered this car in like February. And, and that's it, a long time to wait for a car yeah. which isn't like limited run. It's, or it's like just a normal production car, or, isn't yeah, it? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what key was that? Fourth? That was a little tickling third. I think it's one of those cars where any gear you're in, it's just going to fly. It's because you've got the torque, obviously yeah. stock, it is still only a stock car, but you've still got 800 Nm of torque. Mm. Um, it's, it's a lot of torque at the end of the day, and if you yeah. imagine this now with another sort of 250, 300 Nm, which it is going to have, yeah. um, it's, 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 it's going to be exciting, yeah. But anyway, Alex, thank you very much. No, thank for, you for coming uh, down. Nah, um, man, it's, it's been it's good sound... to finally experience one of these. Yeah, and we finally met as well. I know. Talk we... about <laughs> we talk about golf R videos. Yeah, you know, we do like tons of golf R's, like stage three golf R's. We were going to do one of them. Mm. Then what else are we going to do? The GT4. GT4. Yeah, your personal car. There's a load of stuff we were going to do. Yeah. Um, anyway, there we go. It's we're, all we're finally there. That's it. And um, yeah, I'll leave all of what your details and QS tuning's details down in the description below. It's probably a good time to wrap things up, seeing as we're stuck behind a cyclist. Yeah, I think it's always awkward, especially on country roads. You, you don't want to go past in case something's coming. But then... I suppose you don't have to worry about deafening them. Well, <laughs> yeah, but if they're delaying yeah. you, I mean, a little, well, a little yeah. tick of noise. And they're, and they're like three abreast or something. <laughs> That's what is annoying. Man. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure you leave a like and make sure to subscribe for all the adventures that's coming.